Yes, okay. Uh, check it like previously, we have seen some basic things. Just very firstly, we go through one time, then we'll continue. Already we have discussed like SQL Server is a RTPMS product developed by Microsoft. What we can do with SQL Server, we can create and manage databases. See, main purpose is what? Database creation and maintenance. Uh, basically, remember database creation. Creation is done by our developers team generally. But once again, in real time, in real time, uh, who will create the databases? Means whenever we build a new server, uh, who will create the databases? Like uh, uh, those things we'll see. What is the procedure to create the databases in real time? That we'll see later, okay? After installation. Uh, just remember like uh, uh, database creation. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can create the databases with SQL Server as well as we can manage the databases, right? But already we know as a DPA, our job is what? Maintenance, okay? Database and database server maintenance is our job as a DPA, <laughs> right? Okay, so uh, in the same way, it supports your BI features, business intelligence features. SQL Server supports here like BI features with uh, SSIS, SSRS, SSAS. These are called yeah, SQL Server Integration Services, SQL Server Reporting, SQL Server Analysis Services. These are called as what? MSBI features, Microsoft business intelligence features basically remember like we are not working with these uh, bi features in real time okay but uh, generally uh, we need this ssis in real time sql server integration services basically by using ssis remember we'll schedule the activities actually Okay, so we'll see later. Generally, we have something called maintenance plans. So those maintenance plans are executed with the help of this uh, uh, SSIS, SQL Server Integration Services. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. So that is like... A, We'll see again. That's why whenever we are connecting to SQL servers here, like if I open, I'm connecting through SSMS here, one tool. Maybe tomorrow I will show you how to install SQL server. Uh, means basic installation we'll see first. Okay, so that you can start practice. After that, we'll see the custom installation. Means how we'll do installation in real time we'll see after okay after two three classes right so let me connect to the server okay this take Okay, uh, check here while connecting, it is asking very clearly uh, server name and server types here. Server type is what? Database engine means remember database server. Okay, as a core DBA, regularly we have to work with this uh, uh, yeah, uh, database engine, okay, which is our SQL server. Uh, then see, we have other servers also, AAS, Analysis Services, Reporting Services, Integration Services. AAS, RS, IS, these are called BI features, Business Intelligence features of SQL Server. Okay, right. 
So we'll have some Azure also. This is like cloud related, but these are see like that's why uh, as part of SQL Server we have four types of servers actually. Four types of we can say components: database engine means database server, analysis, reporting, integration. Generally, sir, MSBI team will work with these uh, servers, right? Database engine is there. I will connect to the server. We have seen we can start working with. Already we have discussed in real time. Graphically, you can work with directly. Okay. Or by using the command also, we can work with. Just right click on the server, new query. Okay. So see here, by running the commands also, we can work with. Always remember after typing the command, select and execute. Like this here. Anything, just select and execute. That is like how we are executing the queries. Right, right. So uh, that's like how we are connecting and working with SQL Server by using what? SSMS tool. Uh, voice is not clear. Voice is not clear for all people. We know this saying. Voice is not clear. It is clear for other people or? Okay, Saif, thank you, Pender. No, okay, okay. All uh, right, uh, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, check here, like, uh, uh, yeah, select at the rate, at the rate, server with, like, we can just, we have to understand, we can type the command, select and execute. Let's see how to run the uh, queries. We'll see again. Right, that's like, uh, yeah, that's why while installation, remember, we'll select actually which server we have to install. Database engine, okay, integration, reporting, analysis. So, uh, in general, remember, in most of our production servers, we have database engine plus uh, SSIS, means SQL Server Integration Services, okay, compulsory. Right. Uh, we know already every RDBMS has two parts, non-procedural part, which is SQL part. Procedural part is the T-SQL part. Right. Take here, SQL Server supports, uh, we have seen, uh, working environments we have seen. One is like a standalone environment for small-scale applications where we have single production server. Uh, we can maintain, if you want, standby server also. Generally, there will be uh, no standby servers. Cluster environment is there. We have seen yesterday. Cluster is nothing but what? A group of servers, okay, which are connected to each other, which are working as a single server in the network. In cluster, again, remember, we have Windows, uh, Microsoft failover cluster instance is there. In the same way, we have always on instances also. We'll talk about that later. And yesterday, we have summarized whether we are working in a standalone or cluster, how we can check. Just right click on the server name, properties. See, is clustered false. Means right now I'm working in what? Standalone environment. The same way, uh, we have discussed like uh, by using the query also we can find is cluster. See, false it is in, means uh, standalone environment. Right. Yeah. Uh, basically, say like uh, these are the main concepts we have seen which we are going to discuss. Okay, we'll start with installation configurations. Database architecture, we'll see what is data file, what is log file. Okay, so if data file damage, how to handle scenario. If log file damage, how to handle. All those things uh, uh, we'll discuss. 
backups restores okay automation security high availability features are there here in sql server basically remember the purpose of high availability feature is what to minimize the downtime right yes okay to minimize the downtime we have this high availability features means what we are maintaining the standby databases and standby servers with this high availability features here we are maintaining the standby databases and standby servers okay right so to maintain the standby database okay basically remember our standby server uh, we have uh, some these are some features are there here in sql server log shipping database mirroring okay from 2005 version onwards uh, always on always on okay so by using these features what we can do we are maintaining the standby databases means what like one server is there in mumbai we are maintaining one standby server in chennai okay for example tomorrow if production server is down means uh, uh, mumbai server is down no problem so applications works with what chennai server means what whatever the changes are made in mumbai server right same changes are updated automatically in what chennai server same changes automatically okay right so that means what we'll set up these features one time either log shipping or mirroring or always on today we are using here always on okay so just remember whatever the changes are made in one server database same changes are applied to another server database automatically okay just uh, we'll see here what are the differences are there between log shipping mirroring always on so that you will have some idea why we have these uh, these many features okay later what we'll do we'll see practically okay in the same way we have performance tuning we'll work with performance tuning another important module clustering uh, monitoring and troubleshooting upgradations migrations and some other miscellaneous concepts like import export what we need regularly in real time okay right basically remember like uh, already we have seen whenever the user suppose let's say you are opening some uh, website okay hdfcbank.com okay whenever we make some transaction through the website right so immediately request is submitted to a web server where the website is present or application server here see our application team is maintaining this server then from there request is coming to sql server okay right right now remember this is our production server means application or website is connected to our sql server this is our production server so this sql server is writing or fetching data from this database okay and generally we know any rdbms not only sql server any rdbms uses which queries sql queries right yes sql queries to work with the database data right yes so that's why remember these points i think already you are familiar with uh, if you still if any confusion is there please ping in the chart panel immediately okay yes okay uh check here like uh, 
suppose let's say now this database is uh, up and running for example means what this server is there in uh, mumbai for example this server is there in hyderabad for example standby server okay two servers right so uh, let's see here see what are the changes are made in this production server database as it is changes are automatically applied to uh, this uh, hyderabad server for example as it is clear right yes see to apply the changes automatically to this uh, standby database we are using these uh, high availability features right log shipping or mirroring are always on log shipping is one of a very old concept now we are going with what always on why because in 2016 version actually always on was introduced in 2012 but in 2016 uh, database mirroring db mirroring was deprecated that's why microsoft is uh, preferring always on that's why we'll go with the always on here today okay so right so after that's why remember to sync whatever the changes are made here automatically we have to use these uh, features you have to configure means tomorrow due to any reason if production server down database down or any other issues are there no problem application is redirected to uh, this means what here the database comes online why because same copyright immediately users can continue their works here with this standby server so that's very but like uh, to maintain the standby servers or standby databases uh, we have these uh, high availability features clear right but anyhow i will discuss now what are the main differences are there between log shipping mirroring always on okay so just you have to remember all these features purpose is same to maintain the standby database okay right right okay just here what are the basic differences are there between these features first one is here log shipping in case of log shipping remember what are the problems are there there is no immediate sync means what whenever the changes are made in production database immediately they are not applied immediately they are not sync with the secondary database means by default it takes 30 minutes time default time in the same way second major problem is there tomorrow if this production database crash for example due to any reason generally it will not happen exceptional case then remember uh, we can work with this uh, stand uh, means uh, this standby database will not become automatically production manually as a dba we have to bring this online okay then users can continue their work means what automatically this standby will not become production okay immediately we have to start working as a dba immediately then we can make this online uh, after that users can work meanwhile share downtime is there to the users users cannot continue meanwhile okay that means what there is no immediate sync first problem and second problem is what no automatic failover means what automatically uh, failover will not happen means if primary fail secondary will not become primary okay these are see two major limitations are there with uh, log shipping clear right what is this what is immediate sync what is automatic failover clear 
your confusion is still Gaurav. Ramesh, Saif, Upender, it is clear or confusion is there. Akshay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, automatic failover means remember when our primary fail. When our primary fail, no applications are connected to which server? Secondary server, or we can say uh, when our primary fail, automatically secondary will become primary. If it is what automatic failover. If there is no automatic failover, when our primary fail, secondary will not become primary. Okay, manually as a DBA. We have to bring the database online. We have to bring the server online. Basically, database we have to bring online. Means what users experience downtime. Correct, right? Why? Because you are, let's say morning 3.30 failure happened. You got the mail or calls at 3.40. Then you connected to the server at 350. Then uh, after half an hour, you have bring this database online. Means what? Uh, almost all 45, one hour uh, uh, downtime is there to the application. That is the reason to avoid this uh, limitation. Okay. Log shipping limitation. Microsoft has come up with what? Mirroring. Mirroring. Check here. Name itself is saying immediate sync. Correct, right? Means what? Whenever the changes are made in primary or principal database, immediately it is sync with secondary or mirror, for example. Immediate sync. Okay. So, in the same way, tomorrow, if this primary goes down principal goes down automatically this secondary will become primary means what so that's why remember even as a dba no need to perform anything automatic failover is there see immediate sync is there plus whenever primary goes down either database down server down or network down automatically the secondary database comes online users can continue their work mm -hmm. clear right yes okay that is like uh, we have to understand here in case of what mirroring but again Mirroring has, again, we have seen, right, it was introduced in 2005 version, old version, right? Again, it has some limitations. To overcome those limitations, Microsoft has come up with what? Always on. Always on. Means what? Name itself is saying. Uh, it is on. Means database is on. Either in server 1, server 2, server 3. Database is on. Okay, just remember, always on is, uh, uh, it is uh, database mirroring with additional features here. Means it's internal working, everything is mirroring only with extra features. With extra features, mirroring plus extra features is always on. Yeah, yeah, in always on and mirroring, same name. Uh, server names may be different here, Akshay. Only DB names should be same. But in log shipping, server name, database names also may be different. You will see later. Uh, but in clustering, we have both the server names same. In server 1, 
let's say LIC, server 2 also LIC. But here server names may be different. Here uh, HSBC Mumbai, HSBC Chennai, for example. Right. That is like uh, mirroring plus uh, additional features is what? Always on. Right. Right. We'll see that one. Why? Because just remember in mirroring, we have one limitation is there. We have multiple actually, just for easy understanding, I'm saying. It is one-to-one -one feature. Means what? One primary server database, one principal database can have only one mirror. Only one mirror. But always on is one-to-many feature. One primary replica can have multiple secondary replicas. Okay? Right. So that is, see, that's where remember like immediate sync is there, automatic failure is there, and it is one to many feature. Mirroring is what? Uh, always on is what? Mirroring with additional features. That's why we are preferring today always on. That's where remember tomorrow once you enter in the organization, compulsory we have to work with always on. Okay. Right. Right. That is, see, uh, see, this total setup like primary server, standby server, okay, some other servers, they are there in the data center. Right. Means what? Let's say this data center is there in Mumbai, but here in you are sitting in Hyderabad. Okay. We have team is there. We are working remotely. We are supporting remotely. But how we know whenever anything happens, tomorrow let's say server down, database down, log shipping fail, always on fail, job fail, backup fail, query is taking long time. How we know some blocking scenarios are there, deadlock scenarios are there. How we know automatically for that purpose, remember, uh, we can configure one feature called DB mail, database mail. Okay, if I configure this DB mail feature, then what will happen? Automatically, we'll get email alerts. Automatically means what if server down, database down, anything happen, we'll get what automatically email notifications. Okay, log shipping also one too many, uh, Krishna ready. Right. So that's what about like uh, this uh, DB mail feature we can use, but today what happened? Uh, in the server, directly in the production server, if net connectivity is there, security issues may be high. Means uh, may, that's why what we are doing, we are not going to directly configured in every server. We'll use separate server for us. We have CMS, one concept is there in SQL server, central management server, something CMS. In that, we'll configure this DB mail. This CMS server, what it will do? It will send the mails. It will collect the information from other servers. This will send the mail. Or we are using some tools like SCOM, SSCM, OP Manager, something, some tools we are using. So those tools will send the email notification. Like this, here, different options we have to understand. Okay, SCOM tool is there, SSCM tool is there for alerting purpose. Okay. As well as uh, uh, we have various so many SQL monitor, so many tools are there. Okay. OP manager. From solar wind also we have uh, uh, tools actually. Like different tools in uh, different uh, yeah, companies can use what different tools actually. Right, right. So 
uh, that's like uh, OP manager or operation manager, something like tools, different tools are available for us in the market. Okay. And some companies are using this solar wind tools also. Solar wind, something. So, yeah, like they say, different uh, yeah, tools are available for us. Yeah, what is this? This is some different. Okay, right. So, uh, that's very much Microsoft tool is there, SCAM or SSM, that we can go with that. Right. Okay. So, uh, just see, that's why, like, from where we'll get the alerts from our SQL Server setup, we'll get automatically alerts, right? Disk space or CPU memory blocking deadlocks. Okay. Server restart. All those alerts will get here. See, we'll use something called ticketing tool, right? So in the market, we have so many ticketing tools are there, like Remedy, HP tool, like different tools are there. We can use that tool, okay, to monitor the alerts. As well as remember, like application team is there. Application team also will send the, uh, yeah, some uh, request actually, uh, especially like code deployment, Okay, if any performance issues are there, they will send to our team. In the same way, client also will send the email notification, something means they will uh, they will not communicate directly with DBA team, they will talk to the business people or friend desk team, they will raise a request to our team. Like this, say, like uh, we are sitting remotely, remember somewhere, or setup is there somewhere. We'll get the email notifications through that. We will, uh, yeah, if any critical issue is there, we'll connect and work with SQL Server. Let's say I'm the team lead or manager. So, what I will do, I will, uh, yeah, assign one ticket to our bus. I will assign one ticket to Amol. I will assign one ticket to Gaurav, for example, as a team lead. So I will also, whenever I am free, I will also handle the issues. I will coordinate also whether work is completed or not by Amol. Work is completed by Arbas. If they have any issues, I will resolve the issues. Okay. So I will support them. I will have so many other activities, sending reports, something. The different story, but just we have to understand here, we'll get the issues or we'll get the notifications here in the form of a ticketing tool. Means in the ticketing tool. So we'll work as a remotely, we are working as a DBA. You forget about all these things, only we have to uh, concentrate here how we'll maintain the standby databases, standby servers by using these. Uh, high availability features okay fine <clears throat> okay uh just the major responsibilities of db already we know our job is what we have to handle anything happen our database side we have to handle we are responsible okay right so majorly still there should be no downtime Always our databases and database servers should be up and running. Means available to the applications. Okay. In the same way, no security related issues. No data loss. Already we know to avoid downtime, we are using some high availability features like always on. To avoid data loss, will schedule the backups, okay? As well as some other features we'll use. There should be no performance issues. In the same way, uh, there should be no connectivity issues, okay? So in the same way, uh, installing and configuring, already we know uh, regularly we are not going to install, regularly we are not going to configure. Okay, so that's why tomorrow, once we enter in the organization, total setup 
is there right total setup is there right so that uh, total setup is it will start working with that setup actually okay right right so uh, this uh, but whenever a new project is there or whenever we are upgrading from lower version to higher version so generally we'll go with what installation part the same as your patching sql server patching is one of a regular activity means what always uh, latest patch should be applied sql server should be updated with what latest patch otherwise uh, uh, in real time we have security team is there security team what they will do by using some tools they will run some uh, assessments various tools are there this is for example one tool we have so many different but that is not going i'm not going into that the security team what they will do they will run the assessments monthly on our servers they will send us the email that uh, we have not applied patch on these servers actually they will send to the application owner actually so vulnerabilities are found something that we'll talk about later no i'm not going into that to avoid confusion okay just you have to follow what i'm discussing and practice okay that is enough for us to crack the interview to attend to work start working right so in the same way like uh, uh, we'll see what are the steps we'll follow while patching in real time. Monitoring error logs, very, very important here. Tomorrow, anything happen in SQL Server, okay? Log shipping fail, mirroring fail, replication fail. So, first step is what? First step is what? Checking the error log. Suppose, let's say, uh, uh, I'm calling, let's say Gaurav is calling to his friend. He is also DB. So log shipping is failing. Uh, what his friend will tell? See, for log shipping failing, so many reasons are there. Right? So immediately he will ask Gaurav, check the error log. In error log, SQL Server will write very clear message okay we have error number error message also description depends on that error number error message we can start troubleshooting that's remember as a db our regular job is troubleshooting that's why we have to work with error logs okay check here like uh, once you connect to sql server using uh, SQL Server Management Studio. See here, under Management, we have SQL Server Logs. So here, we can open the log, first log. Here, we can check. See, some errors are already recorded. For example, in my uh, case. Okay. Error number. Like this, we'll have some backup fail. Like this here, we can understand. Means uh, we can read the description, actually. But uh, as a experience, tomorrow if you get experience, you will see by checking the error number, you can understand what happened. Okay, immediately you can plan for troubleshooting. The remember our regular job is troubleshooting. Already we know for that purpose, we have to check the error logs. Clear, right? We'll see in detail. This is our actually, uh, we'll check the, this current log. Actually, we have some other logs also. We'll discuss about this, why these other logs are there. But we'll check this current log. Okay. Right. Right. So in the same way, uh, we have to check all the scheduled jobs are working or not. Uh, we'll automate, right? Most of the tasks will automate. So we'll see uh, all those automated tasks are working fine or not. Okay. 
Right. So these are see, some of the activities are there sir, as a database admin. Means what we are responsible for. Okay. We are responsible for all these uh, uh, activities as a DBA. Right. Right. Okay. So uh, next one here like uh, one second. Yeah. Uh, check here, like we have so many uh, versions of the SQL Server was released in the year 1988 or 89. From there onwards, remember, we have so many versions are there. Okay. So, but uh, uh, most of the clients, they have started using here from 2005 version. 2005 version onwards here, most of the clients are most of the users started using SQL Server. After that, we have different versions of this here, right? And we know already 2017, from 2017 onwards, SQL Server works in any platform, okay? So it may be Linux or Unix or Mac, any OS here. Anyhow, by default, it works in Windows, but any OS. But if still, if you see in real time, in 98% scenarios, we are maintaining in Windows only. SQL Server, we are installing and maintaining in what? Windows only. Less scenarios are there, 2 to 5% scenarios are there, where we have to uh, install SQL Server in Linux. Less scenarios. Okay. Right. And we know already our latest version is what? 15.0 version, 2019 version. 2019 version is our latest version. How to identify we are working with which version? Check here after connecting to SQL Server. You can see here, see, SQL Server 15.0 it is showing in my machine. Means immediately you can understand. It is 2019 version. Okay. Right. So, uh, but you don't know, for example, you have confusion which version it is. No problem. We can run some simple queries here. Select at the rate, at the rate version. By running this simple query also, we can find out we are working with which version. See? See? It is showing very clearly SQL Server 2019 version. See, no need to buy heart actually. Directly commands are there for us. Okay. Fine. Fine. So check here like, uh, let's see like various versions are there and how we can identify. And already yesterday we have discussed like whenever a new project is there. When a new application is going to launch, let's say backend is SQL Server. Backend is SQL Server. Already we have seen application owner is there. Application owner, what he will do? He will ask us to install SQL Server. For example, uh, immediately uh, we'll, we have to install SQL Server or no. We don't know, right, which version we have to install, which edition, right, in which server, what features, only database engine or integration also reporting, what features. That's where, remember, immediately, anyhow, I will show you uh, after uh, two, three classes, process how we'll do in real time. Immediately, in general, what we'll do, we'll uh, will send the up uh, i will uh, as a dba will send the application owner one uh, project questionnaire for example project form or project questionnaire for example so i will ask this application owner you fill this form you fill this questionnaire like two three pages questionnaire is there you fill this questionnaire and send me along with the approvals, along with the license. 
means what this guy will go to our procurement team he will ask i want 2017 so purchase uh, 2017 take license procurement team will take license he will they will send to uh, this guy okay we have purchase uh, yeah what that purchase order number or something then he will send this also along with the questionnaire he will send this uh, uh, that purchase bill or document also. Again, in company to company, we'll call this bill uh, with different names that we can forget. Means we'll ask project questionnaire document. Means what? In this project questionnaire, he will fill everything. Which version? Which edition? What will be the initial database size? Whether standalone or cluster or always on? Okay, complete details he will fill in this project questionnaire. According to this information submitted by the application owner, then we'll install the respective version. Okay, we'll see that life cycle I will discuss anyhow before starting installation process in real time what is the life cycle we are following again remember it may differ from one company to another but the common life cycle steps i will discuss yeah in general remember one question is there uh, that's why you can ask the questions anytime i will try to answer no need to worry uh, Saif is asking, the primary and standby must be of same version or not? It can be different, he is asking. In general, remember, in real time, we'll maintain same versions. Primary 2019, standby also 2019. Generally, I'm saying. But technically, if you see, technically, technically, remember, primary can be lower version, secondary can be higher version. In general, remember, we'll follow same, same versions in real time to avoid the features related issues. But primary can be lower version, secondary can be higher version technically. Why? Because lower version features are supported in higher version, right? In most of the scenarios. But higher to lower is not possible. Okay, we'll see this uh, once again while discussing with log shipping all those concepts. So clear, right, Saif? Saif? Generally same in real time, but technically it may be what? Lower to higher version. Right, okay. So this is like uh, yeah, different uh, uh, versions are there as part of SQL Server. Right, we'll go with the next one here, SQL Server Components. Very, very important for us. Uh, we have to understand what components are there in SQL Server, what we are installing in the server, what we have to install in the other machines. Uh, generally, remember like a SQL Server similar to Oracle or other RDBMS product. It is client-server architecture uh, product, right? That's why we have client components are there and server components okay yeah we'll talk about this again in detail in the tomorrow's class after this slide i will dis i will show you how to install sql server in your laptop okay so that you can start practicing means what basic installation i will show you tomorrow but how we are installing in real time? What procedure we are following? Process also. I will discuss after two, three classes. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, if any questions are there, queries are there, please uh, feel free to type in the chat panel. Any questions are there or if you want, I can unmute also. You can discuss if any questions are there, queries are there. Okay. Right.